Hello ladies and gentlemen, Paul Berman from HP here to help you understand what you should expect from Intel with their new 11th gen products and the brand new Iris Xe graphics. I'm going to be honest and say it's super tough to properly explain Intel's 11th gen range in a way that appeals to everyone. Everyone has their own levels of understanding and care factor. Plus, I'm not an engineer and I didn't build it. So some of you will find this too basic and others will find it too much. But stick with me for my thoughts on yet another update from the blue team. There's something that everyone can appreciate about this new wave of innovation. And there are two ways you need to approach these new chips. Firstly, how has it improved over the previous 10th generation? Intel are saying it's more than a generational increase in CPU performance with up to a 24% increase in performance year on year. Graphics is better too, up to twice the frame rates versus the Ice Lake or previous 10th gen equivalent. I'm gonna get into graphics a little bit more in a moment because Iris Xe graphics has some great selling points. Secondly, we should look at what's new, and there's a bunch of new additions. We're still quad core, but they're fresh new Willow Cove cores with new high performance Tiger Lake transistors as part of Intel's new Superfin technology, which is powering that performance jump. Now, Intel called that innovation across the entire process stack from channel to interconnects. It certainly seems like this is genuine innovation in a world where people's PC habits have changed remarkably post COVID. Big frequency gains are had here with options up to 4.8 gigahertz. You can see an increased frequency and a greater dynamic range across the board. Actually, it's probably easier I just show you what's new. So check out this graphic and just scan your eyes over the 11th gen improvements. There's those new Willow Cove cores I mentioned along with a converged chassis fabric. And I have no idea what that means, so I'm not even gonna bother Googling it. The important stuff that I do know is a new memory controller for faster RAM. An integrated Thunderbolt 4 port is amazing to have, but it's the embedded graphics potential that users like myself will love the most. Up to four 4K displays at 60 frames is a welcome change. I'm currently running a three monitor dock solution in my home office. Now I have a gaming tower that powers them fine, but when I used my previous work laptop, which was a 10th gen HP Spectre X360 13 via a proper Thunderbolt dock, I did have to drop the resolution of one monitor to achieve those better frame rates. Even using that screen just for emails, 30 frames is annoying. So this is one welcome change I've noticed going to 11th gen. Now, not everyone is running a setup like this, but it's good to know you can. And on products like the HP Spectre X360 14 with Intel's 11th gen Core i7, half the features are really there because HP and Intel can put them there. So I've mentioned that Intel have quoted up to twice the frame rates with their new Iris Xe graphics offering. So how does that claim stack up? Looking to year on year compared to the previous Iris Plus graphics, Intel provided me with this graph. Now clearly some titles have had an absolutely huge jump. The old faithful CSGO now hits frame rates near on double what your thin and lights display could probably even replicate. PUBG and Fortnite become playable, if only just. But if you take a broader look at what titles are playable at 1080p using Intel's Iris Xe graphics, then this list gives you a pretty good understanding of what Iris Xe graphics is capable of. Now, it might be a bit rich to call low 30 FPS playable, and this isn't my list, but you can certainly see what's on Intel's radar here. They know how big the mobile gaming market is, and this is a perfect way to be part of this. Enthusiasts will still rock the gaming focus rig, whether it be a custom desktop or gamer slash creator laptop, but those are still not the solutions for everyone. When people start traveling again, or even now as we slink away into bedrooms or don some headphones in a common space at home, the ability to game on a laptop you bring everywhere and use for everything is a real bonus. So for a bit of a recap, we're seeing good year on year CPU improvements of up to 24%, which is more than a traditional generational change. Iris Xe graphics with Thunderbolt 4 make your work from home setups even more extreme. And we're finally seeing some capable gaming on thin and light. Something we've been promised since the original Ultrabooks, but now that we're finally seeing. This, however, is only two thirds of the story. There's an underlying artificial intelligence focus with Intel's 11th gen notebook range. As many of you know, AI is being infused into everything. Everything smarter is a term we all accept. Artificial intelligence is demanding on resources, but can provide such great benefit that we're seeing companies like Intel build chips that are engineered specifically for our AI-infused future world. 
Intel have released a huge slew of benchmarks comparing the Intel Core i7-1185G7 against the Red Team's Ryzen 7 4800U. Certainly the battle everyone who likes that sort of stuff wanted to see. Now while the numbers were all very impressive and certainly for the most part easily in Intel's favor, there was one graph that stood out to me. This one. Compute and graphics, Intel are strong. Now I dug deeper into the tests and I'll let you do the same, but they look like an honest comparison of the stuff you're likely to use. Web browsing in Chrome, tasks in Microsoft Office, gaming, all with strong Intel performance. But it's this four times the machine learning figure that really got me interested. AI is becoming ubiquitous in so much software that you use. Now, while different software utilizes different functionality, AI is often used for doing tasks like blurring your background on video chats, doing ink to text in Microsoft Office, and heavily in creative tasks like colorizing and upscaling photos and videos. Leveraging graphics-based acceleration for sustained workloads gives Intel the edge over AMD here. But lastly, AI performance doesn't just make your experience a faster one. It dictates other, more noticeable experiences. If you look at HP's Spectre X360 14 with its Intel 11th Gen Core i7, you'll see how AI is appearing as useful features. Take in bag detection. Using some basic AI, your laptop knows that you've placed it inside a handbag or backpack, but haven't turned it off. Instead of overheating and draining a battery, the PC intelligently reduces its power consumption and can even begin to hibernate if needed. We're also seeing similar adaptive intelligence for screen calibration, automatically switching between color profiles based on what software you're using. This automatic profile switching even extends itself to your power modes. No longer do you have to manually switch on performance modes when rendering or quiet mode when watching Netflix. HP and Intel's co-engineered Spectre will do it automatically and intelligently. So there you have it, up to 24% higher performance and up to twice the frame rates versus the previous 10th generation. A CPU built for our AI future, enabling new features that future versions of us will look back on as the start of the modern PC. Now just finally, I didn't talk about Intel's Evo program on this video as there was just too much to mention, so please check out my other video that I've dedicated to everything Evo. In short, Evo is essentially a gold standard of performance, experience, and form factor. Intel work with each manufacturer to have their devices Evo certified, highlighting to customers that the device has met strict criteria in partnership with Intel. I'm Paul Berman from HP. Big thanks to Intel for all the data, and I'll see you next time.